So as, uh, as a kid, like many kids, uh, I built a lot of model airplanes. My dad was a pilot during the Second World War. Uh, when he came home from the war, part of his PTSD recovery was building model airplanes. Mm -hmm. I think the guy had every conceivable airplane that participated in the Second World War as a collection that he built, and he built a couple of ships. And then um, I got into uh, school, of course, and uh, college, and then medical school, and a surgical residency, uh, none of which had much time to do anything other than what I would, had to do. Uh, but uh, having said that, a friend of mine, uh, we were surgical residents together and both inveterate sailors, mm -hmm. and we both decided we'd build this the Phantom, the, the small schooner that you saw over in the gallery. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I started it, and I got the hull done, and the spars shaped, and then the surgical residency took over, uh, and it lived in a shoebox literally until I retired. So <laughs> wow. for 35 years, it was stuck in a in a closet. And when I retired, about six or seven months after I retired, I I looked at it and I said, you know, I think I'll finish it now. And and I did, and I thoroughly enjoyed doing it. It kept me relatively drug free and off the streets and out of my wife's hair, and uh, it's I thoroughly enjoy it. So it it went on from there, and I just started building more and more complex ships and. No, so I just started uh, doing it again uh, four or five years ago. Yeah. So this is a, a very intricate hobby. Is this a little bit like surgery? Very much so. <laughs> I mean, it requires the same degree of manual dexterity, uh, the same uh, uh, degree of tolerance of frustration, mm -hmm. uh, the same problem-solving skills. I mean, it's never easy, that's for sure. But nobody dies if you screw it up. <laughs> exactly right. Exactly right. That's right. So this seems, I mean, it's, it seems almost like you go to school for this. I mean, how did you learn how to do it? Basically by the seat of my pants. I mean, trial and error. A lot of errors. <laughs> yeah. I mean, just a lot of books or YouTube videos or how would you do Just figuring it out? Just figuring it out. I mean, the, the plans are here and uh, some of the plans come with reasonable instructions. Not this one. This is an Italian company. And the uh, instructions are translated from Italian very poorly. <laughs> I honestly think by a graduate student in Italy who flunked out of his English and uh, did the translation after a long night in the bar. <laughs> so I get a I get a kit that has uh, some of the basics done. For instance, uh, this is uh, plank on bulkhead. So mm -hmm. the the bulkheads are pre-cut mm -hmm. and the keel, and you you put glue them on and then plank over them. Mm -hmm. um, so the the wood strips are all just wood strips. Um, some of the fittings are precast fittings. Mm -hmm. A lot of carving, a lot of sanding. Yep, it's half the fun of this is learning about the ships and the folks that sailed them and the crew and what they put up with. Actually, I'm on the Board of Trustees of C, C Education Association, mm -hmm. or C Semester as it's called now, uh, out of Woods Hole. Mm -hmm. And we have two tall ships, one in the Pacific and one in the Atlantic, uh, that take kids out for a college semester. And they're, they're beautiful ships. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been on the Charles W. Morgan uh, the Constitution, of course, when as she was docked, and then I've sailed all my life on a variety of sailing ships, sailing boats. My wife and I have a 50-foot sailboat that we spend most of our summers on. Um, I like working ships, uh, mm -hmm. working models, the old uh, uh, lobster smacks and fishing boats, um, Chesapeake Bay. I've done. I built all of those. They're all over the place now. Uh, and historic ships like like the Constitution or or the Victory here. Mm -hmm. um, the only, the only yacht I've ever done was the Atlantic, which is over in the gallery. Uh, I just couldn't resist the lines, they're just mm -hmm. so beautiful. But most of them are, are working ships or, or historical ships. So the Victory was uh, Admiral Nelson's ship uh, in which he fought the Battle of Trafalgar. Uh, and it's, it's very interesting. Uh, unfortunately, he didn't survive the battle, but at any rate, he uh, opened a new chapter in naval warfare. Normally speaking, uh, ships of a line came along broadside to each other and blasted each other with cannon before the rigs came down, and then grappling hooks on the side, and, and they boarded and fought hand to hand. Hmm. What, what Nelson did was he said, no, I'm not doing it this way. And he sailed the victory in between the ships that were lined up on the line, so that he went between the stern and the bow and took his cannons and, and raked the ships. So he'd fire into the stern, and the cannonballs would go along the whole length of the, of the ship and wipe out everybody who was there and all the men that were manning 34 to 50 guns. Mm -hmm. 
So it was really a, a very interesting, interesting ship. She's 104 guns, very powerful uh, representative of the British Admiralty. A full rig ship like this, um, with uh, all the, the square yards, it'll take me a, a year and a half to do. I, it's just something that I enjoy, mm -hmm. um, and you know, I work three hours a day, four hours a day, mm -hmm. sometimes all day long. Uh, it varies. Mm -hmm. I don't work on them very much during the summer because we take our own boat to Maine for a month and then down to the Chesapeake for a month, and so there's a hiatus there. But most of the time, I'm I'm at it and. I just love to do it. Done. There are there are ships and there are kits that are made to, that that have the whole broadside open and exposed so you can see the interior. Mm -hmm. I, I don't bother with that. It's, uh, but having said that, um, there's a lot of tedium involved in this, mm -hmm. uh, and I I break it up. So I'm doing a lot of the planking now here, which is tedious, and I, I build some of the masts as, to take a break mm -hmm. um, as we as we go along. The uh, Constitution over in the gallery has over 2,000 copper, individual copper plates on its bottom. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's, that's tedium. <laughs> it, it comes in a, in a roll. I have to cut them on a paper cutter into mm -hmm. individual uh, plates and then, and then put them on. When you, when you take it up, start simple. Mm -hmm. uh, do something that is very clear, good instructions from a good kit maker so that it's all there. Uh, before you tackle something like this. Mm -hmm. uh, there are other modelers that, that make plastic military. Mm -hmm. I, I, have, I've, I served on an aircraft carrier and I've been trying to find a wooden model of an aircraft carrier and, and I can't, so I'm going to have to build it from scratch. That's after <laughs> this one. Yeah, they, they have uh, everything from uh, whale boats to, well, the Portland, the old side wheeler. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you, you learn as you go. There's lots of tools that you, you learn about um, and wish you had learned about earlier. Mm -hmm. um, there are different adhesives that you need to learn how to work with, different paints. I do go online uh -huh. uh, because the, the plans and the instructions that come with these things are not ever complete. So mm -hmm. I go online and there's a lot of information online about all these ships. Mm -hmm. It's uh, amazing. Oh, we'd be all right if the wind was in our sails. So we'd be all right if the 